<laughs> I love you. Hi, Mia. Hi, Kayla. I love you. I love you so much. Hi. I love you. How are you? Does everyone know John McNamara? My friend and the most amazing, he's the one that made Celia's dress for her birthday. Amaze Balls. This is Sandra. She's from the Augustus School, uh, Lane School and we've been making a public service announcement called Labels Are For Jars with seven girls. So this is why we had them there today. We were shooting the commercial this morning and you rocked it. I'm so proud of you. Look gorgeous. I love you. Isn't she gorgeous? Isn't she hot? This is the Limerick Rose Orla. Can I have a round of applause for our Limerick Rose play? Isn't she gorgeous? Oh, it's so great to see you. Come on in. Everybody, the Mayor of Limerick, Maria Byrne, has arrived. Flawless. Amazing. Kieran coming in. You all know Kieran as well. And everyone knows Linda Ledger from St. Munchens, who was a legend. Can we give her a round of applause for the food, please? And we have Claire Kirby from Limerick Animal Welfare in the corner, saving all the animals. I love her. Janice Sullivan, oh, Rachel Panukin. Rachel's here to write a piece today for me. Can we all come in here for a photo, all of us together? Oh my God, Siobhan, you're beautiful. <laughs> Hi, I'm Richard. Hello, this is Siobhan Nolan from Special Olympics. Can we give her a round of applause? for bringing Toma Park to life. You were amazeballs. This, this is Siobhan from Doris Limney, what I think one of the most important institutions in Limerick City. Can we have a round of applause for her? They're integrating Limerick. That's what they're doing, integrating Limerick. Siobhan, you're the bomb. Do you want a cup of tea? Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. I really... Hey, Kieran. How is it going? I'm fantastic. Guys, you all know Kieran from Regeneration. Can we have a round of applause for Kieran, please? for regenerating Limerick City. Karen, go have a cup of tea. Guys, does everybody know Dolores Ryan from Enable Ireland? Can we give them a round of applause? Dolores, help yourself to a cup of tea. <laughs> Guys, this is Billy and Ant from the Limerick Red Ribbon Project that help people with HIV and AIDS. So, and they're amazeballs. Do you want a cup of tea? <laughs> <laughs> Do you see me kicking your ass outside? I just get her life. Your gorgeous wife is waiting in the car. Do you hear her? She's wondering when you're going to turn up. Willie O'D is in the building. Oh, Willie O'D is right here. Thank you. Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. Guys, does everyone know Chris Quaid from the My Ross Community Enterprise yeah. Center? Thank you. Chris Quaid, have a cup of tea. Everybody, this is Damien Landy representing Limerick Youth Service, one of the most valuable organizations in our city. Damien, have a cup of tea. This is Rosalind Purcell from the MS Society. Can we give her a round of applause, please? Guys, this is Una Anderson Ryan from the Parkinson's Disease Association of the Midwest. Can I have a round of applause for her? My mother suffers from Parkinson's disease 18 years, so she is a very important lady to me. Thank you, and I love you. I love you. Do you want a cup of tea? Well, let's go upstairs anyway, and we're going to start our networking event. round of applause for Limerick fashion icon, the national fashion icon, Miss Celia Holloman Lee. 
What a feckin' inspiration you are. Dorothy from the Georgian House is gonna come up and say a couple of words right now. This is the building we're in, the building we're respecting, we're loving. Dorothy, Meanie Pratt, come up here. Hi everyone, I'd just uh, like to thank you all for coming. I think it's a fantastic occasion. And this is a beautiful house, I'm sure you'll agree, and you probably had time to go around. I would just like to remind you that this house is open to the public from Monday to Friday for visitors. And I'd like you to spread the word. We need more visitors. It is a charitable trust in its own right, and we need people to support us. I just want to welcome everyone to the Georgian House on behalf of myself and the board of the Civic Trust. Thanks to Richard for running this event. Star. Basically, it was set up in the 80s by a group of people who were tired of seeing a negative image of Limerick. And that's still the core ethos of the Civic Trust, where people just take it upon themselves to say enough is enough and do their own bit to try and improve our city. A specific agreement would be within the, in the area of heritage, whether that's built heritage or natural heritage or just whatever our heritage is. Now more than ever, we need the people of Limerick to stand up together and all do our bit. And whether it's improving, like what the Trust do, improving the built and natural heritage and environment, whether it's looking after your community, like so many of the community groups doing around here, it's great to see people from all over the city. The point is that no matter what you do, it's, it all matters. I think there's too much of a, an, an, a mentality right across the country that you go, if something's wrong, you go to the government, you blame the government, or you go to the council, or you do this, or you look for an agency to do it. Why can't we do it for ourselves? Why can't the people of Limerick stand and say, this has to be done, so let's do it. Here, let's, here. And finally, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed the day and got something out of it. Richard, to use your own phrase, it's amazeballs. I want to invite Limerick's first person, and I think, the, for me personally, the most amazing mayor Limerick has ever had. And I'm not political. I don't give a rat's ass about politics. I'm not, you know, like I love Willie O'D, I love Jan, I love all of them individually for what they do as people. Maria Byrne, get up here. You're amazing and I love you. Thanks very much, Richard, for that introduction. First of all, Minister O'Sullivan, um, Deputies O'Donnell, and you, the guests here this evening. First, and you, the citizens, really, of Limerick, you know, is the best way of putting it, because we've crossed representation from all across the communities and voluntary sectors here today. First of all, I'd like to start by thanking Richard for organising today, because I think, you know, it's wonderful to see so many people from such a cross-sector of the community across Limerick. So just to congratulate Richard on putting today together so well done, Richard. to say since, even since I became mayor and before that, you know, Richard and all he's done for Limerick, it is all so positive, you know, with I Love Limerick and certainly he has such a positive attitude and his whole team that come with him and that's what it's all about here today is teamwork and it's all about the different communities and the different volunteering sectors coming together and working together as a team for the betterment of our city and I think that that's the message that Richard is trying to portray here today and certainly as um, I Love Limerick, they have been very successful in doing that to date and long may it continue. Um, Thank I'd you like Maria, I really appreciate it. And when you look around the different groups that are here and the different representatives that are here, they're all, you know, it's all about pulling together, but it's all about promoting their own um, ethos, obviously, but also it's about promoting our city because Limerick is certainly a wonderful place in which to work and to live in and, and, and to do business in. And, you know, we have had so many positive events. And one event is was that I'd like to mention especially, and it's something that is very close to my own heart because I was involved in it, was um, I know Siobhan and Richard are here from the the Special Olympics today. And And I think it's one event that really portrayed Limerick to the rest of the country and, and, to, and to Europe as well. And it's something that all the, all the community sectors came out and volunteered in. So the reason why I'm using them as an example is so many people came from the different communities and volunteered from the young to the not so young. And that's what's you know really, really unique in Limerick because we do tend to pull together in relation to an awful lot of things and an awful lot of events. So I'd like to compliment each and every one of you for the work that you're doing in not only promoting your community and the 
sector that you represent, but in promoting Limerick as well. And to wish you all continued success for the future. Everyone in this room represents Limerick. What I want to say to all of you is if there was greater cohesiveness in Limerick and all you organisations were helping one another, you wouldn't be reliant on funding from non-existing governmental sources. And an amazing example of this is Friends of the Elderly and St Munchen's Community Centre who united in November. And would you agree, Trevor, the treasurer of Friends of the Elderly, it's changed your lives. Can we have a round of applause for that, please? There is some incredible, like, there's so many amazing people in this room, but one of them I think that really sticks out in my mind is Anne-Marie Gleeson from the Paul Partnership, who is amaze balls. I mean, this woman, this woman has changed so many people's lives, I'm not kidding you. Another group of people that really, really impressed me are these young girls sitting right in front of you. They're from the Augustine Lane Project, right? They have just formulated a public service announcement called Labels Are For Jars that proves it's not where you're from, it's not where you look like, it's not what you talk like, it's about what you have inside of you. Can I give these girls a round of applause please? Because these girls are all fierce, they deserve the attention, not only they're beautiful girls but they're intelligent girls and that project in Augustine Lane is amazing what they do in there and I'm not biased just because my sister Maeve Lynch teaches in there and she's amazing. <laughs> I've never seen someone care more about people in my entire life and would you, uh, would you agree with me girls isn't she the bomb diggity diggity bomb hello. The whole point of this meeting is for all of you to help one another. We have representatives from the Cleona Ring Foundation here, we have Una from the Parkinson's Foundation, we've got faces like Leanne Moore, Michelle McMahon, people that basically, if you attach your charity to your organisation, it would increase the publicity of your organisation. I can't explain to all of you how important social networking is to all of you as organisations, and if you don't have a presence on Facebook, I don't know why I'm saying this, I should hide, <gasps> we'll try to help you. We put Friends of the Elderly, Doris Limney, all these organisations are now on Facebook. Facebook. Another very important organization that we have to talk about today is the Civic Trust. Can we have a round of applause for the Limerick Civic Trust, please? If it wasn't for the Limerick Civic Trust, this building would not be here in its glory as it is today. This building is insanely genius. It was restored in 1993. We can't understate the importance of heritage and culture in Limerick and remembering where you come from. I know it's not where you come from, I know it's where you're going, but in some cases it is extremely important to remember where you come from and this Civic Trust building is a, is a testament to that. And all of the youth of Limerick don't seem to know what the Civic Trust is. Do you know what the Civic Trust is? No, right? <laughs> we are aiming to change that. It, it's very, very important that we all support the Civic Trust and what they do. So if you don't know what the Civic Trust is, Google it, basically. <laughs> now, Laura Ryan is here from the Limerick Communications Office. I want to give her a round of applause for basically, basically, Laura is the communicator of Limerick. She handles all the press coming out of Limerick. And I think since she's gone on board the Limerick Communications Office, the image of Limerick has completely been refurbished in the national media. And this woman is a legend. And she deserves another round of applause. So, yeah. We have Jennifer Maroney Ward, who is amazeballs. Where are you, Jennifer Maroney Ward? And she is from the Learning Hub, and the Learning Hub has changed the north side of the city. As I said, we're not all fighting for the same funding. We have got amazing people in the city, like Jan O'Sullivan, who wrecks my mind. She's so amazing. There's Jan O'Sullivan. Do you know why? Now, I've got to tell you something. I am not political in any way, shape, or form. I could not give two shits about politics. I will never be able to enter into politics because of my crazy 90s past in New York. Watch out for the internet and news of the world in about three years' time. I couldn't give a rat's ass. I'm not political. What I care about is people. And when I see Jana Sullivan, she's one of those people that's up at St. Munchen's and she doesn't leave when the photo op is over. She's sitting there, she's lunch, dinner and breakfast and if they need to clean up, she's cleaning up. Now I want to get on to one of the most important people I feel in this room, for me personally, who I think is the Limerick Person of the Year in my mind and that is Linda Ledger from St. Munchen's Community Centre. Hands down. <laughs> Linda Ledger 
Where are you, Linda Ledger? Linda Ledger has changed the lives of everyone in her neighborhood. And she doesn't do it out of ego, she doesn't do it out of nothing, she does it because she cares about people. She sends flowers to people's funerals, she's feeding hungry people. This is the type of person that we all can learn from. Because again, like you and Jennifer Murray Ward from the Learning Hub, you're not opposing fractions, ye should be helping each other. Jennifer Murray Ward is an amazing person, you're an amazing person, two plus two equals seven. Can we ask Linda Ledger to say a couple of words? We link it with everybody because I'm not afraid to ask anybody for money or help or all the councillors or ministers or anything. I'd ask anybody. So thanks to JP, we've got 300,000. We're building a, a big extension. And I suppose it's proof. Friends of the Elderly came out and we can work together. Jennifer is only down the road from us and we work together. And there's never competition. If any of us need anything, it's a phone call. Can I have it or can I do it? And I just think if everybody did network together better, especially with the seniors and more all over Ireland even, going into another community centre and them then coming to us and Sean Limerick off, you could have lunch with us, see King John's Castle, go to Bunratty, go anywhere, and it can be done, but we'd need Richard to organise it all. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to thank Richard, and I, was, I don't know how he gets so excited about well, me because it's. You're amazing, can you I love you, I love you so much. We, like, I tell you, there's some inspirational people like Tino Gorman has raised almost 1 million euros for charities, and she's a grandmother. <laughs> Next, next up to the mic, I want to invite them. Trevor from Friends of the Elderly. Trevor, let me tell you something about Trevor. Trevor will work morning, noon and night to ensure that these women have everything they need. He's cleaning toilets, he's building kitchens, he's making sandwiches. Get your arse up here and tell them. This is your moment to talk about Friends of the Elderly and I love you, you're amazing. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. So I would like to thank my mother, my father. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Lads, it's amazing to be here today in a, such a wonderful building. Um, thanks to Civic Trust and, of course, uh, Richard and I of Limerick. And we are all here for one reason, one reason only. It is networking com communications. I can leave here today now saying that I've met X, Y and Z and I won't feel embarrassed or shy about picking up the phone tomorrow or Monday looking for advice off the different people I've met today, we've all met today. That's what it's about, breaking barriers. Because in our charity work we all do, uh, it's very, very hard nowadays to get funding, to get the help, to get to work and resources the way the country is going. So everybody who, who, are, who, who has attended today, and we all can help each other in the future, it's just amazing to see such a big turnout on a Saturday afternoon. But lads, Richard and I love, and I love Limerick are amazing. Friends of the Elderly would not, would not be here today for Richard, because the publicity we have gotten is amazing. Yeah. We're 21 years established, and three years ago we acquired our own premises in Upper Carey's Road. Please call in to see us. Thanks to the wonderful man, the wonderful man JP McManus, who kindly wrote us a cheque for 150,000 euros, and handed it to us, and we, built, we bought our premises, and we done it up. And the wonderful man felt very happy as well a couple of months ago, and he gave us a cheque to buy a brand new minibus. 42,000. So I think JP McMahon is not here, he does deserve a round of applause. Yeah. 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 Well, like, I'm going to shut up and everyone is making the talk anyway. Yeah. So, like, thank you very much. Now, I want to talk about a very, very, very special organisation in Limerick called Duras Limney. I don't know if you all realise the work that Duras Limney actually has done in this community. They help asylum seekers, migrants. No one is helping them, no one is supporting them. And I think Duras Limney are one of my favourite organisations in Limerick. This is Siobhan from Duras Limney, and Siobhan is going to tell you a little about Duras Limney. I love you. How are you? Duras was set up 11 years ago when the first direct provision centres were um, created. The government at the time created this um, concept of dispersing people who were seeking assistance from the Irish government under the Geneva Convention. And this system has ma been maintained and it's been kept and it does allow people to be given 19 euros a week. They're not allowed to work, they're not allowed to get education, they just have to sit and wait and wait and wait. And there's some people that wait up to seven or eight years. And then they could be deported or they could be allowed to stay. 
um, we were set up to assist or to welcome them. The Jerusalem needs the door of Limerick. It was the idea was to welcome people to Limerick. A round of applause for Jerusalem Nate. Damien Landy is another person changing lives. Damien, come up. I want you to talk about Limerick Youth Service. Since I got to know Richard, I'd like to just mention in terms of um, I thought he'd come along, you know, and you get a beautiful piece shot and you have your eight or nine minutes. But also when he comes along, he really brings a real buzz to everything he's involved in. And he's a real appreciation, I think, for working with young people, the potential in young people and what they're all about. So you, you get so much more than just the video of each, which is fantastic as well, and the publicity, and the Facebook page, and the pictures. Uh, but Richard as well himself coming along makes, it, makes a huge difference to be involved with. He also keeps everything so positive and um, we won't talk about it. I suppose it's been tough times for a lot of organisations and people the last couple of years. But I think um, a day like today and when Richard is involved, when things are so positive and that, it shows that um, we have a lot. We have a lot in this room, we have a lot in this city and uh, yeah, long may it last. And, uh, Cheers. Thanks for all, all the work you do. What about you, sir? I am. Well, we, um, we work with organisations, uh, clubs and volunteers across the city and the county, and uh, I'm very lucky to be with the youth service a long time, and I get to work with young people. And in the last number of years, I suppose, been working with young people taking a more central role in living. City and supporting them, um, and that's really positive. There's a group of young people in Banlacurra Weston who are leading by example in their community, which they have a lot of challenges and difficulties up there. They're not focusing on that, they're focusing on supporting other young people in their community. There's a video on uh, I Love Limerick about bullying, and it's really, really good. It's really great if you have any friends of any ages who've um, struggled with. With bullying, it's a, it's a great piece to look at and watch, and it'll stand a testament of time as well. It's a, a fantastic piece. Um, so I think, you know, I, I'm lucky that I get to work with uh, those young people who, I suppose, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're really leading by example in the city, and we're lucky to have them, and I think uh, we need to remember that. The key thing here is, and it's, a lot of speakers, it's the same thing. It's about helping people. It's about, it's about doing, doing it for yourself. <clears throat> and I suppose the, the, the one word that um, I keep seeing, because I, I'm involved in kind of different things, it's about inspirational people, um, ordinary people that do inspirational things that inspire others. And the Clean Ring Foundation, it came from the unfortunate death of a girl of 15 years of age who, at the age of seven, <coughs> developed... Um, a tumour in the back of her eye. That started a whole chain of events for that family for about eight years. We watched what happened, we watched the way she lived her life, the way she did things, despite her illness and despite the great handicap that she had over the remaining eight years of her life. But then it was equally inspirational to see what her parents did when she, when she unfortunately did pass away. And as a consequence, the foundation was formed in uh, December 2007. And basically the money that we raise goes to families of kids that have either terminal illnesses or very serious illnesses. It's for the cover of the expenses that people don't see. It's not easy out there for anybody, but by people coming together and events such as this, it's a fantastic um, testament to the human spirit and to people's ability to get things done. So I'd like to thank you all, I'd like to thank Richard, and as I say, anything we can do to help anybody here, let us know. Uh, Donny O'Connor is my name and uh, I'm with Inside Magazine, it's a family based magazine. We have linked both the city and the county together and we have introduced people from the city, organisations out to the county and vice versa. And we're getting a fantastic response on that and anybody that's here tonight from the city or the county that would like to be involved with us in our magazine, we're more than welcome to have you on board. Keep us in business because we keep you in business as much as we can. So thanks again, I appreciate the opportunity. I have been involved with the Limerick Pride Committee for the last 10 years nearly and uh, this year I have the honour of being the chairperson. So as we have civil partnership in the country for the first time this year um, and as we're all from various different community groups I'd say we all know at least one person that's gay. Um, I'd like to invite you to come and join in with our parade. It's about celebrating the wonderful progression that Ireland's Irish society has had with regards to civil rights. 
the theme this year is whatever you would like it to be, just come as a group. Dress up as you like, bring music, bring dance, bring theatre, bring whatever you like to celebrate the day, being Irish, being in Limerick and feeling fabulous about it. Wow. We have got everyone and a kettle of fish in here today and everyone is as important as each other. We're basically all here to help each other. Does everyone know who Franny Healy is right there? Actress Franny Healy? <laughs> who, is a, who is a grandmother who had a child at the age of 15 and is a testament to overcoming surviving odds. We have amazing people in the city. There would be no I Love Limerick if it wasn't for Anne-Marie Gleeson, if it wasn't for Tracy Aspel from GrowRoots.ie who's been mentoring us, if it wasn't for Susan Mosley and Sharon Slater who's been building our website, Jennifer O'Connor from Insight Magazine. Have you all seen Insight Magazine? Yes. It is amazing. Can we have a round of applause for Insight Magazine? The first magazine marketed in Limerick that is about the entire community. It's not a gl glossy women's magazine. It could feature Haunty Bior and Friends of the Elderly. So hello. Hello. So you're getting a bit of everything. I think now we have to talk about Pat and Theo from Monster Images. Without them, there would be no documentation of Limerick for the last few years. And Nicola Chow, who is my associate producer in I Love Limerick. If anyone if anyone needs an event planner, she's the one to go to. And there is three people in I Love Limerick. It's not just me. It's Gary, Sean and me. We're three partners. I am the attention whore, but they are the ones... <laughs> a flawless attention whore. I know, I know, I know. Unbelievable, isn't it? But they're the ones that have to shoot and edit everything and hole out in Gary's house for 120 hours a week to edit all the pieces. So I want a round of applause for Gary and Sean. Do you all know John McNamara, the Limerick fashion designer who's been designing all sealers? John McNamara, I love you. You're amazing, Balls. Can we round of applause for John McNamara? And then, not, not to gloat or whatever, but my boyfriend is happens to be the best looking man in Limerick. Celia, look at him behind you. Daniel. And if I don't see runway possibility there, there is no such thing as runway possibility. On a more personal note, um, my mother has suffered from Parkinson's disease for 18 years and Una from the Parkinson's Disease Association is here. Can we have a round of applause for her please? And the issue with Parkinson's disease, it's ignored because, you know, it's not glamorous. You know, there's a lot of organizations that get a lot of support and Parkinson's disease is unfortunately not one of them. So it's very important to me if anyone can help Parkinson's disease, Ms. West, in any way, I will be indebted to you and I will do anything you need me to do in return. And I mean that. Now that's Una and a round of applause. And before, before I introduce Flaw, I, I, don't, I don't want to cry, but. Before I introduce Flawless, my friend Nicola died last week, and Nicola, this day is for you. City Council's distinguished uh, lovers of Limerick, because I'm not a citizen of Limerick, but I am definitely a lover of Limerick. I think this is one of the greatest cities in Ireland and something we can all be proud of. <laughs> all men are created equal, and we have the right to pursue happiness. 
and the French, liberté, égalité, fraternité. But let's take it, let's unite all of us and together commit ourselves not just to cherish all the children of the nation equally, but to cherish all the children of this planet equally, because we are all totally interlinked. I'm thrilled to be here in this magnificent house that is such a tribute to the Limerick Civic Trust, to all the people who got involved, and what a city you have, the Hunt Museum, and did you thrill when you saw Mihal O'Sullivan playing in the convention centre? I mean, I can't tell you how many times Limerick was, but I want to tell you there's also a little bit of sadness. Because I came down here a few months, I visited the Limerick Degeneration Programme, and I went around various areas of the city, and I'm not going to name them. But it was clear to me, and I say this as an outsider, that kind of political border disputes and territorial ideas and this belongs to us and that belongs to the other, please, please, and I'm saying this humbly as an outsider, try to put those divisions behind you. Because that's the way. way that this wonderful city will be able to continue to develop at the pace that Limerick richly deserves. And in saying that, I mean no disrespect to those people who have various interests. If you discuss, if you come to a consensus, this can all be solved if you do one thing, if you put the interests of the people of Limerick before the interests of any party or any section or any division. As far as I'm concerned, the people come first. Yeah. <laughs>